this video, we are going to cover the basics of youth lacrosse. Here's how the game is played at level 1-2 and level 3-4. Level 1-2 games are played 7v7, and level 3-4 games are played 8v8. Teams are expected to play with two attack, two midfielders, two defenders, and a goalie. And at level 3-4, they add a third midfielder. Long poles are not permitted at levels 1-2 or 3-4. Levels 1-2 and 3-4 games are played on a smaller, modified field. Level 5-6 and 7-8 are played in a full-sized regulation field. Level 1-2 in MBYLL uses smaller goals, 4 feet by 4 feet. What's up coaches? My name is Davey Emila and I've played the sport of lacrosse for 22 years at the youth, high school, collegiate, and now professional level. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the offensive principles in the sport of lacrosse. All right, coaches, very, very important for our players to have a functioning stick. Also very important for you to have one as well. We need to set a good example for our players, and we need to have a stick that is able to operate on the lacrosse field, right? Solid head with nice mesh, along with a great put-together shaft is what we're looking for. Again, let's set a good example for our players by having a good stick ourselves. Continuing on with our gear, let's talk about our lacrosse helmet. Very, very important that each one of our players has a properly fitting, properly put on lacrosse helmet to wear to each and every practice and game. Along with that, staying in our head area, it is essential that each player have a mouth guard as well. This mouth guard is recommended to be attached to the face mask of our helmet so it is not easily lost. Two very important pieces of equipment there. Next up are our shoulder pads. Very important that each one of our players has a properly fitting pair of shoulder pads. By common times throughout games or practices, you can see those attachments come undone. It's very important that the player stops and reattaches those attachments for his safety. In addition to our shoulder pads, we have our arm pads. All right, lacrosse is a physical game where contact and checking is allowed. Many times the checking will occur on your arm. It's essential for us to have a pair of well-fitting arm guards that are not moving up and down our players' arms but are staying put in order to protect. Moving down from there are our gloves. It is essential that we have a pair of lacrosse-specific gloves. Uh, the reason being, it is essential for our mobility and effectiveness as well as our protection. As we have mentioned, many of our checks occur in our hands, so good fitting, properly put on pair of gloves is essential as well. Coaches, it is extremely essential that each one of our players is wearing a protective cuff to each and every practice and game. That is a piece of equipment that should be worn and is worn at every different level of lacrosse, including at the professional level. Moving down, all right, our footwear. It is very important prior to our practice or game to be aware of the surface that you and your team are going to be on. Whether it is artificial turf or grass, make sure we are wearing cleats or the proper footwear depending on the surface that we are playing. All right, coaches, we're going to talk about passing and catching. Believe me, we're going to be excited to get out to our first practice and there's a lot of things that we want to accomplish, but it's important that we build good habits and start with our fundamentals and nothing is more important than our passing and catching. We're going to hit on passing first, all right? We're going to work here from the ground up. We're going to hit on a couple key principles here that we can remind our players as we work throughout the season. It is essential, all right, as a right-handed player now that I get my left foot in front of my right foot and bend my knees so I'm in an athletic position. So once I have my feet set, we're gonna work my way up, all right? And I'm gonna have my shoulders and hips turned, all right, to angle my pass better, okay? Once I have my body set from my feet up to my chest, all right, it now becomes about my hands and my arms, all right? It is essential for our young players to get a separation from our body and our stick, all right? As you'll see a lot of times we come in with short arms. We call the alligator arms or dinosaur arms. What we want to do is press away from our body and rotate, all right? So we are passing with our stick in this area, this area, AKA known as the box, okay? We want to make sure that we are stretching, playing fundamental and passing from the box each and every time. Last concept we want to go over is the push-pull 
aspect of our hands, okay? As we look at my bottom hand here, which is my left hand, that is gonna be my pull hand, and my top hand, my right hand, all right, as we place on the stick here, down the middle of the shaft, is gonna be my push hand, okay? My push-pull squeeze from my ear is gonna be the most consistent way that I'm gonna learn how to pass effectively. Once I set everything out through my body, correctly and I'm able to just set my hands on my shaft correctly and push, pull, squeeze into successful passing. When we're talking about passing, it's important to understand where we want our hand placement to be. All right, so when I'm looking at my shaft, what I like to tell young players, all right, is to move our hand halfway down the shaft to find a place that's comfortable, all right? Our top hand is gonna be our right hand as a right-handed player for this example. So I'm gonna move my hand down halfway. And as a coach here, we wanna build some consistency for our players throughout the season. So a great idea is to use a piece of tape to mark that area so we're as consistent as possible when we're throwing our passes. It's important here, especially as a young player, to understand the value of keeping the stick loose in our hands and almost into our fingers here as we learn how to pass effectively. That allows our wrist to hinge at a better level. It also allows us to remain more comfortable and consistent with our hand placement as we're throwing our passes. We're gonna talk about catching the ball here, which can be a little bit trickier for younger players than learning how to pass. Right, catching, a couple things that we can do to help ourselves. First and foremost, before we even receive the ball and the ball's even in the air, we can teach our players to show a good target, right? Show a target, demand the ball, open our mouths and talk. And again, you'll notice our theme of everything up by our ear that we call the box. We want to show a target right to the box as well. The common thing we're going to see is our young players trying to snap or grab at that ball that's in the air. We want to promote the idea and build the good habits of soft hands and catching this ball behind our ear each and every time. So again, it's going to take getting used to and repetition, but once we show a target, we are receiving that pass with soft hands and behind our ear, so we are able to now control the ball and make the next play. Let's talk about our hand placement when we're receiving a pass and teaching our players how to catch a lacrosse ball. As we talked about when we're throwing the ball, we talked about moving that hand down to the middle so we could push and pull. We're gonna move this hand back to the top so now we have more control over the throat of the stick. This is gonna allow us to control our head a little bit more, especially if the pass is outside of the box and we have to move our stick accordingly. This way, I'm able to track the ball and receive that pass behind my ear. We do not want to have our players gripping this pole super tight. All right, that makes it much more difficult to adjust to a pass. It also makes it much more difficult to move our hand back down to make the next play. So, we want to continue with that theme of loose hands and feeling the stick in, in our fingers. That way, I'm able to receive this pass and be in a, in, a, in a passing position then to go make that next play. Talking about shooting, essential that we first and foremost get our good principles and our good fundamentals mastered right, before we move on to what's next. So, assuming that we do, start nicely from our feet, rotate our core, turn our shoulders, and we are in good position. We want to push our leg all the way through, almost like a pitcher in baseball, okay? That way I know my weight is completely shifting all the way forward and getting all my power into my shot, and I'm not holding back. All right, an example of not getting all my way through is this. All right, you notice I'm not coming all the way through. We want to make sure our players are stepping forward off of their back foot and rotating all the way around like a pitcher in baseball would each and every time we take a shot. All right, coaches, as we get into our shooting drills, all right, we're going to see a lot of different things that we're going to want to take away from habits from our players. All right, a couple things, again, starting from the ground up are our feet. We talked about how important our feet were and how essential it is to get in the correct position with our back leg pushing off and our front leg stepping strong. All right, one thing we'll see from a lot of young players is either stepping too far to the outside, all right, which is gonna pull our shot to my left, or stepping across our bodies which is essentially blocking our momentum and prohibiting us from getting all the way through. Remember, we talk about getting our weight all the way through our shots. If we step across our bodies, we're not able to do that. A great tip or a great thing to tell our players is to try to split the goalie in half and step right at their five hole or in between their legs to know that we're getting as accurately as we can towards that cage. All right, coaches, as the season is going on and we're doing a great job spending a lot of practice time on building our skills and fundamentals, 
All right, we're going to get a chance to play in some scrimmages and game-like scenarios, so we want to make sure that we're teaching our kids outstanding team offense. These kids are going to be listening, learning, and having a great time in a fun environment. As we are getting in to our offensive possessions, it is important that we give our players both positions to get to and how to get there. By establishing our positions and getting to the correct spaces, we are best setting ourselves up for success on offense. Next, and a, way that, a great way to get everybody involved and everybody communicating and working together is to get the ball around as something we call touches. Touches is moving the ball in a circle, making sure that each player gets a touch and allows them to feel a part of involved in the group. Now let's talk about the, some things we can do to be successful offensively. First and foremost, all of the players on the field, each and every one of them, we want to be engaged and in the play. All right, this means we want to be in an athletic, triple threat position, as we call it, ready to make a play. Our sticks are up in the box that we have talked about before, ready to either receive a fast, and my knees are bent, and I'm ready to move my feet if necessary. Okay, so now each player is involved and ready to be a part of the offense. The one player with the ball right, has a decision now. We want to dodge hard towards the goal to make that defense move. Once that has happened, that player with the ball is either going to take a shot or move the ball along to their same team offensive player. A right, great thing to emphasize in our offensive sets are, is ball movement. It is great to see multiple passes in an offensive set. The ways to do that is by keeping the ball movement, but also to keep each player that does not have the ball moving, engaged with their stick up, ready to make a play at all times. So coaches, we want to have an offense that promotes ball movement, that promotes player movement. We want to have our players with their sticks up, always ready to make a pass, make a catch, take a shot. And the reason for this is because it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. It is difficult for a defense to defend when all players are moving and every player is engaged and the threat of making a play. And the way that we really cultivate this is we do drills in practice that are going to promote these principles. So we do drills with a lot of ball movement, with a lot of player movement, with a lot of players with their sticks up, being ready to make a play. This is going to overall just promote everyone staying engaged and being able to enjoy this great sport of lacrosse. Hi, I'm Malcolm Chase with RPM Athlete Performance. I'm here today to talk to you about playing defense in the game of lacrosse. Let's talk about equipment and perhaps the most important piece of equipment that protects your head, your helmet. You want to make sure your kids are properly outfitted and that they're wearing them at all times when they're on a lacrosse field. Your shoulder pads, you need good sternal protection, it's got to cover your clavicles, and you need shoulder caps, something that fits well, but it's not so restrictive you can't move and put your arms straight above your head. Next, your arm guards, your elbow pads, uh, you want to make sure that you have good protection there, good padding. Again, it needs to allow good range of motion but ultimately be protective from slashes and other types of contact. Then of course you have your gloves. You need good wrist mobility in your gloves, but you also need good wrist protection. And trying out a bunch of pairs of gloves and making sure that you have a good feel is really important. And you need a cup. All players need an athletic cup to play the game of lacrosse. Very important piece of equipment, often overlooked. All of your guys need to be suited up. Lastly, make sure that your kids are outfitted with the right footwear. They need good traction when they're on a lacrosse field. So make sure they're not going out there in basketball shoes on a natural grass field. That's a recipe for disaster. So good high quality cleats with good bite so they have traction and can change direction quickly. Now let's talk about the most exciting piece of equipment and that is your lacrosse stick. You need one of these on the field at all times to play the game of lacrosse. Now traditionally you'll see defensemen using a long pole. This is not going to be introduced until fifth grade at the youth level. So all of your players are going to have to use a short stick. Offense, defense, midfield, doesn't matter. This is your weapon right here, okay? You wanna make sure that this is a consistent throw and catch for you. It's not too big of a pocket where it's too much whip where the ball's going into the ground, right? And you can also catch it and the ball's gonna release. And of course, it's legal by NBYLL rules. Also, very important for you as a coach, you wanna make sure that you have a good consistent stick that throws and catches so that you can demonstrate and be a part of practice and an active member of every drill. Sometimes you have to demo, you don't wanna be borrowing your own player's stick and taking them out of the drill. You wanna make sure you have your own stick and you are actively engaged and participating. At the start of every practice and game, you wanna make sure that your players are properly warmed up. The best way to do that 
is to use a dynamic stretch, which means the players are active. They're not stationary or static and sitting on the ground. They're actually up and moving around and doing athletic movements to prepare to play. Also really important, get the sticks warm, right? Do some good stick work, really simple drills, just to get the action of catching and passing going. Don't overcomplicate your warm up. Make it simple, make it fun, make it active. If there's one thing your players need to learn this season, it's good defensive stance. And the reason why we do that is we want to have them in a good, low athletic position and balanced when they get in that position. So sitting nice and low, not falling over backwards, not falling over forwards, but in a good position, able to move around the field, and they're gonna have their stick off their hip. Not in here tight, they're gonna put their backhand in their side pocket and their sticks out in front. The reason why we teach this low stance, it's, it's important to have a low center of gravity and to be able to move around the field, not just be stationary. We wanna find drills that are engaging and excite your kids about the game of lacrosse and playing defense. The kids have to be able to move forward and back, side to side, They've got to be able to shuffle, cross over, and then even pick up ground balls out of this position. And so find drills that are really active and still teach them these good fundamental positioning and keep them excited about the game. In the game of lacrosse, you're either playing defense on ball or off ball. And when you're on ball, you want to make sure that when you arrive on your player with the ball, that you're teaching your players to get nice and low with their stick off their hip. As they arrive, they want to break down getting nice and low, having that stick out in front that they can use to disrupt throw checks, but it also acts as a buffer for them to be able to react and gauge how close they are to their man. As that player approaches downhill, you wanna make sure that your players are active on the balls of their feet and that they're reacting to the movement and reading their center and their hips rather than looking at their eyes and their stick. And then once that uh, offensive player initiates movement, you're teaching your players how to drop step either way as they react. And you're teaching your players how to play off-ball defense, right? They need to learn a couple of really important things. So one is, how close do they play out on their man? They can't be shut off on their guy the entire game. They've gotta be able to get into the interior of the defense and support. So the farther away the ball is, the closer they can get to the interior of the defense. The closer the ball starts to get to their man, they need to start to press out so that by the time he receives the ball, they can step out and play good position, one-on-one -on -one defense. Another really important concept is keeping your head on a swivel. That is to say, you see the ball and your man, right? So you're constantly looking back and forth between the man with the ball and your own guy. You want to try to avoid situations where the ball is 180 degrees away from your man. And so just build out a little bit of an angle, a little bit of a man ball triangle, right? Either back up and point your hips that way so you can see the ball and your man and your swivel shorter, or you can turn to the other side. But that man ball triangle will really help your young players with those difficult situations where they have to keep their head on a swivel. Now that you've got your players playing on ball and off ball defense, lots of moving parts, how do you coordinate those moving parts? And the answer is simple, it's communication. Teaching your players proper communication on defense is essential to playing good, solid team defense. And it's important to make that part of your culture. It's difficult to teach, but if you're, you're consistent about it, and you make it a repetitive and even kind of make it a fun thing for your players, they're going to engage more with it and ultimately they're going to be a better lacrosse team for it. Here's a really simple place to start with your communication and starting to integrate team defense. And that's that we always need somebody on the ball, right? I got ball! Nice and loud, right? With authority. The kids are going to really engage in that process. You can even have awards for kids who are the loudest talkers or the best communicator on your team defense. And then that man needs a help right and a help left. Just the two defenders that are adjacent, right and left, respectively, can talk nice and loud, and that gets you started towards having a good, loud, communicating team defense. One of the most important skills you're gonna be teaching your players is how to use this, their cross, to throw stick checks. And two of the most simple checks you can teach them right off the bat that are ultimately the most effective and the lowest risk are poke checks and lift checks. You wanna make sure that you're also teaching checks on the move. Very rarely you're gonna throw a check and not have to move your feet, so make sure that the drills that you construct have them moving their feet in coordination with executing these stick checks. One of the most effective skills that you can teach your players is how to throw a poke check. Getting nice and low in that athletic stance, when you arrive, is a great time to throw it, right? We put our hand in our back pocket, you're showing your players how to step out, approach the ball, 
slide their bottom hand through like a pull cue, and they're aiming for that bottom hand ultimately. Right? Trying to disrupt that bottom hand, neutralize, they might even get a good piece of that stick as it's coming across in a split dodge and dislodge the ball. Very low wrist check, very effective. Also teach your players how to throw this check and then move their feet, whether it's throwing a poke and moving laterally or drop stepping, which is also what they want to be doing when that player is initiating that dodge, just throwing that poke and opening up and drop stepping. One of the best checks you can teach your players to be really effective on defense and not compromise their position is a lift check. Right? Getting under their opponent's bottom hand and lifting is extremely effective when you neutralize that bottom hand and force that man to throw one-handed. You may dislodge the ball, you may force a bad pass, maybe a weaker shot that's easier for your goalie to save, and you guys can ultimately gain possession for your team. Also with that lift check, making sure you're not throwing it to the ceiling, that you're decelerating that check, right, and not hitting their man in the face mask. That's really important. And as you mentioned with the poke check, you want to make sure that you're doing the lift check and coordinate it with movement, not standing stationary. Lift checking and drop stepping, lift checking and moving laterally are really important components to executing stick checks. As a coach that's coaching the defense, you're going to be spending a lot of time on defensive skills and stopping the other team's offense. But once you gain possession, you're jump-starting your offense. And you've got to teach your players how to transition the ball up the field safely so that you can go to work on the offensive side of the field. Part of teaching defenders how to transition the ball offensively is incorporating drills that allow you to pick the ground ball up off the turf and move it to a more dangerous position on the field and getting their heads up and seeing their teammates. Also moving and not standing around once you gain possession is really key. So having drills that teach your players to get to specific areas of the field and having that offensive mindset and flipping that switch from defense to offense is crucial. Stick skills for your defenders are essential to transitioning the ball up the field. Make sure that you're working drills into your practice that get progressively farther apart between the two players trying to move the ball up the field because ultimately they're going to be throwing longer passes than offensive players in order to jumpstart that transition offense. At the younger level, everybody wants to score goals and get rewarded and have all the glory. It's really important as a defensive coach that you're keeping your players engaged and rewarding those little things that ultimately help your team win games. Ground balls, great communication, cause turnovers, these are all reasons to celebrate. So make sure you keep your defenders active and reward them when they do those good things on the field. Yeah.